Welcome to our uh, concluding session for today's program. We've got three very interesting presentations for you to listen to. I'm sure you'll all gain a lot from it. Um, our first speaker is Simon Chan, the Chief Engineer of Radley Communications. He's going to continue our discussion on Tetra, the title, Leveraging Tetra's Data Capabilities to Enable Distributed Intelligence. Thanks, Simon. Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon to all of you and uh, it's good to be here in Melbourne. What I want to do today just before we start is to just get a feel for what sort of an audience I've got in front of me. Um, do we have people here who are just inquisitive because of the title or if you're here because you come from the Tetra industry and you want to know more about uh, data or what? So if you can just give me a show of fingers, you know, you don't have to raise your whole hand. You know, are you here because you're inquisitive because of the title? Uh, or perhaps you're sort of trying to understand Tetra capabilities. Anyone here trying to get a better feel? Okay. All right. So anyway, let's get started. My name is Simon Chan. I'm the uh, Chief Engineer at Bradling Communications. And uh, what we do at Bradling, I'll just flick over to the... I'll just give you a quick overview first before I talk to you about what we do. Um, today we're going to talk about what distributed intelligence means. I know it's a bit of a strange term, you might not be familiar with the terminology. Um, we're going to talk about Tetra being a voice and data solution. We're going to talk about what Tetra data means in the context of this little presentation. Uh, we want to introduce a new term which we call Beyond Voice Radio. Short data service, which is an offering from Tetra. And we want to talk about GPS and vehicle and personnel location, geofencing safety applications, and look at what Supura offers in a package course, a short data applications, and then I'll talk to you a little bit about BVR controller, which sort of wraps up by talking about telemetry and SCADA. So we're trying to get through quite a bit, but I think we should be able to do it in about 22 minutes according to my rehearsal, but uh, I'm sure when I look at the, the, uh, the countdown clock in front of me, I'll know how fast I'm going. Okay. Just to, just to introduce you to Rattling Communications, it looks like we've imported half of uh, our team here from Western Australia. Uh, as a company, we commenced operating in 2007, and our, what we do is we design, build, and maintain communication networks. Uh, we provide end-to-end -end communications for mission-critical uh, systems. So specifically, we've done a lot of work in the mining industry. We're sort of venturing into different spaces, uh, in, in Western Australia, we deployed the first Tetra network, as well as the first multi-site Tetra network. The first rail Tetra network was also introduced by us, and there are over 70 Tetra nodes across Australia now. Uh, we've delivered over 10,000 terminals, with over 63,000 square kilometres of coverage. And if you were to aggregate all of that, uh, that's about the size of the country of Denmark or the country of... Um, Belgium, which is quite a large chunk of land in the northwest to Western Australia. We've got about 120 staff headquartered in Perth and with a branch in Brisbane. And I head up a team of R&D engineers who focus on what we call beyond, beyond voice radio technologies. Okay, so what's distributed intelligence? You know, in any organisation, there's always a need to have timely and relevant information in order to make informed decisions. And voice, I believe, provides only one level of that business intelligence. Because voice is serialised, like I'm talking to you one word at a time, sometimes it can be a slow process. And to be able to get things across a radio channel can be very slow and can be painstaking. And there's always risks of miscommunications due to poor audio, distractions, language difficulties and other factors. And so it's important that we have to look at other ways of doing things. And for every set of conversations in the Tetra world, we require one dedicated channel, and that consumes communication resources. So what we're saying is that with written communications delivered via data over Tetra, we can offer a greater level of accuracy and certainty, and also there's a trail of accountability. And uh, so what we're trying to push for is this voice plus data uh, thing that uh, Tetra offers. What sort of intelligence is required to make intelligent and informed uh, decisions? Well, the usual sort of questions, you know, the who, what, when, where, why, how sort of questions. For instance, 
Who is available to undertake a certain task? What equipment is in use in a particular area? Or maybe when did the emergency situation first become known? Where has Wally gone? Why is there smoke billowing from the storage location? How did that accident start? There are different levels of management within any organisation and personnel require different answers at different times. So what I'm going to propose during this talk is that because we have voice and data, we can actually consolidate the two to make it work for us. So again, you know, distributed intelligence is timely and relevant information that is collected, collated and retrieved from a variety of sources and some of these sources may be intelligent equipment as well. So a piece of equipment might be able to give us information on what the current status is. And also that information can be distributed and transmitted to other people. So that within the organisation, those who need to know will receive the particular piece of information that they need to be able to make the decision. Tetra is a standard off of voice plus data. It's an Etsy standard, so what that means is that it's, it's well defined and that this whole standard of voice plus data is not just something random that has popped up but it's made available to, to us to use. For every 25 kilohertz of bandwidth, because Tetra uses TDMA, there are four time slots available for us, and that's a fairly efficient use of the spectrum. But in most situations that we've seen at Ratlink, voice communications with the predominant form of transferring information across the network. Now in the smallest configuration, Tetra offers three time slots for voice and one time slot for what they call control channel. So basically, as I said earlier, you can have three parallel conversations happening at any one time, but there's also that one slot which is the control channel. So in the most basic setup, three conversations can be happening at any one time. Now I just want to define what we mean by Tetra data so that we, we don't get too confused here. Um, behind the scenes in a Tetra network, there's this piece, bunch of equipment which is called a swimmy, switching and management infrastructure, consisting of a base station, RF equipment, data packet switching equipment. All these manage the flow of over-the-air voice packets by manipulating the data flow on the control channel. Now, in most voice-centric networks, the control channel is not very busy. And therefore, it's possible to take advantage of this available resource to send and receive data packets over the air on the control channel. And once the Tetra Voice network has been designed and deployed, if you've already built one, you have data as part of your package. So it is there to be harnessed, it is there to be leveraged, to maximise your investment and to get return on your capital. With uh, clever software and electronics, the control channel can be used for transferring digital data quite efficiently. Uh, for the rest of this presentation, because I only have about 15 minutes left or whatever it is, we'll limit the definition of Tetra data to, te to digital data that is transported through the control channel. Two disclaimers. Disclaimer number one, Tetra is not the medium for transmitting live streaming video. I know that uh, there are people who have been able to transfer or, uh, uh, still images on Tetra. Uh, this, we're not going to talk about that. And also, secondly, Tetra, while the Tetra standard offers circuit-switched and packet-switched data capabilities, we will not have time to do this in the next 15 minutes. Now, what do we mean by beyond voice radio? What we're trying to do with trying to put data over the control channel is to squeeze usable data through the network while avoiding interference to call setup times and voice quality. In other words, by pushing data down the control channel, we have to at the same time make sure that we're not saturating it to the point where the voice communications are being interrupted. There are numerous applications that can enhance the capabilities of all these industries that are listed on the slide there. Industrial, mining, transport, agriculture, healthcare, security, hospitality, national security, whatever. By adding data to your voice network, you'll be able to take and enhance all of that. And we at Radlink call this paradigm shift beyond voice radio. Now I just want to spend a few moments to talk about short data service. The short data service that's offered on Tetra is analogous to SMS or short messaging service in GSM. All of us are familiar with SMS on your phones and so on. Short data service is very much similar to that. It offers a standard-based method of transferring about 150 bytes of data payload on a control channel. 
and uh, it is, can be done between two tetra terminals or between a tetra terminal and a swimming or in fact between a tetra terminal and an application connected to the swimming so what it means is it's a good way of moving data around your network in a controlled environment now most tetra handsets are able to send and, re send and receive SDS natively through the handset and keypad so you know for this particular radio here you've got a numeric keypad so in the old days, for those of you who remember your early generation mobile phones, you used to be able to send SMSs that way. Yes, it is possible to send messages from the radio on the left to the one on the right. Now, although the one on the left has a keypad, that's therefore it's able to allow you to enter your SDS text data, the one on the right does not have a keypad. So it can not send, but it can still receive. Now, another thing that you can do with the short data service is that you can connect electronic devices that offer serial data capabilities to send its data through a port called the PEI port. Now, on these different radios, you can see that uh, on the base of a handheld radio, you've got a port that allows you to connect electronic equipment. On the back of a mobile radio, you can have up to two ports for you to do, to, to do that. And basically, you're sending 80 commands into that port, into the radio, in order to be able to transmit that data over the short data service. 